Today we're going to talk about how to play auto-loading heavy tanks, specifically the M3O and the T-77. And this one is a user replay, so thank you very much, Hand of God, for sending it in. And if you want to send me your replays, put them on my Discord server, link in the description. Now this vehicle is one of the best to rates in the game currently, and if it is in the shop, I can recommend it. 380 alpha damage, 2 shots, 2.5 intra click reload, 0.33 dispersion, not ideal, but... 10 degrees of gun depression and quite good armor on this vehicle right here. So what you want to do with this thing ideally is avoid trading evenly. What does that mean? Just like what happened here. You don't want to shoot one shell for the enemy's one shell. You always want to shoot two for the enemy's one. And that map positioning is very important. Now, what I would have personally done here is pull back, reload, get two shells, and then go forward. Because as you can see on the minimap, the entire medium side is full of enemy tanks on this t32 is pretty much alone but with the one shell right here still works and now i'm gonna have to go on a very long reload but the time was definitely there to reload both shells and now here goes t32 now the enemy team is having quite a big upper hand there two of the mediums are dead the only mediums that we they had they have three so again medium advantages are very good to have they don't always result in a win but often, if those mediums are competent, they do. Now, it is pretty much a disadvantage right here. And what you want to do in a situation like this, distance is armor, in a way. Because if you keep the enemy far away, and it takes four of them longer than 18 seconds to approach you, you can put four shells into them. Because you put two into them, then you pull back while they push you, you reload, and then you have another two shots. And four shots on this vehicle is pretty much an entire to rate medium tank. So you want to have a distance in a situation like this. Because distance can act as a lot of extra armor. Because you can pull back while the enemy closes the distance. You can use it to reload and then have a further shell. Without you actually having to expose yourself or being shot at and losing hit points. While the enemy loses hit points in their approach. Because, you know, you're more accurate stationary than on the move as well. So now, two versus four right here. What is the biggest problem? Identifying the most dangerous threat right here is what is actually important. And that is, contrary to what you might think, that light tank. Because that guy can just swoop around the entire map, approach from the back, and that is exactly what he is. And there's also a T-49, which can do 560 damage. So that is the biggest threat that needs to be taken out first. And that is exactly what happens. And now, two versus three. And you want to keep those guys at a moderate distance, right? You don't want that uh, type, and you don't want that camera to be right at that rock. Because then they're just going to peek you, and you're dead. And you want to keep them a little bit away. And the type is kind of happy to help there. First shot again. Doesn't go in. A lot of shots that Hand of God is firing here. They don't pen or they, they miss. But despite that, it's still going to be a very excellent game. Because remember, you don't need to be perfect on every shot. Not every shot has to be a perfect hit. But you do have to be better than the enemy. If the enemy is bad, you just have to be a little bit better than that. And now on the SU-130 here who is now the next biggest threat and the next easiest target to take out as well, because, you know, taking out a tank that is a big threat and that is easy to take out should always be priority, uh, but unfortunately he stays there on three hub points. Now, obviously, a T-482 and a T-77 are probably one of the best combinations you can have in a end fight like this, but the enemies are doing really well at throwing this away. The best thing that type could do or could have done is after spawning the T-77 firing, push quickly because he has a 20 second window where the T-77 is helpless, but he doesn't. He stays out there, T-77 can use the ground to its advantage, and again, that is extra assistance right there. And I have no idea how the Chimera screwed that shot up, he should have taken himself a lot more time. And now, Chimera has a 13 second reload, and two shots are enough to fish him off. And that is exactly how you don't fight a vehicle like this. And that is exactly how you fight in a vehicle like this, right? Don't go too close. Always have space to reload and fight on the reload. Because that is your massive advantage. Always fight on the advantage. Don't fight like that Pantera, who's a complete clown. I have no idea what the hell that's about. But always 
find the advantage, right? Where can I go where I have a better position, where my tank works more effectively, where, I don't know, I'm fighting somebody that's inferior, like that T-23 right there, which is a inferior, I mean, to the majority of tanks. But those are the kind of things that you want to think about when you play an auto-loading heavy like this, right? You need space to reload, but you also need space to attack as well. Right? You can't just sit in the corner in the camp at the back of the map. That doesn't work. But you always want to have space uh, and cover between you and the enemy. So you always have sufficient time to reload and then pop out when you're loaded and then disappear again to reload. And because that way, with a vehicle like the T-77, four or five clips is all you need to get a really good battle. And the same is true for this vehicle as well. Obviously, this one is a lot worse than the uh, T-77. It's also me playing it, so it's that's also worse. But uh, at this point... What I'm going to do here, again, I know where the enemy heavies are. Like, I know that all three of them are there. Why would I fight them head on? That is the worst thing you can do, possibly, unless you're like a VK-90 and you side scraping off the house where you're indefeatable. But here, the T-32 pushes forward, and this is exactly what you want. You want that advantage, the guy peeks too far, and he shoots once, I can shoot twice. That's what you want. If you can't shoot the enemy multiple times for them shooting you, don't want to peek that. And now, obviously, the T-32 thinks again, and I'm going to also reposition myself right here. I've got three teammates up here already occupying this position, and there is an enemy heavy tank coming up right behind us as well, which I currently ignore because he's just a Tiger P. And uh, what I'm going to try to do here is uh, take a shot at the T-32, but he disappears. So now we're going to have to have a look, which is the target that I can do the most damage against, and that is the VK-168, because he's big, he's fat, he's slow, and he's down there below me, and I have the gun depression to go down there and fight him. Obviously, he does go forward again, and now I'm gonna be like, eh, you know what, the Tiger is actually much easier to shoot at than the VK-168, right? While I'm fighting that VK, I'm watching what the Tiger's doing, right? That's the level of craziness you have to go to if you want to go to the top of levels, right? You, when you fight one guy, you watch everybody else what they're doing, right? Because I'm, if I'm fighting that 168, but I see, wait, the tiger's driving in the middle of nowhere on the mini map. I can shoot him. That's what I'm doing as well. And here comes the T32. Yeah, just screwed up that one. Could have worked out, but nope. And now I'm gonna drop off the hill right here because the Yak Panther is ahead of me, and that T-32, he's just going for the Ag Panther, so I know that I can put a shot into him, and I probably should have used AG there. American rears are quite notorious for being very thin, but with AG, I could have maybe already finished him off. And now I'm gonna go back up here, and here comes the Tiger P, though. So what do I have to do now? Obviously, the easiest target to take out, and the one I should focus on, is the T-32. The VK-168 is no chance of ever coming close enough to fight me in a sufficient amount of time, and that Tiger P does exactly what you don't do when engaging with a autoloader like this, and that's just sit in front of it while it has a clip. He should have waited for the VK, he should have waited for the TSO2, they should have all three engaged me at the same time. And now, I can use this Tiger P even as a shield against the VK, and I also get very lucky there. Look at that, I can use the Tiger as a shield against both of them, and I have three shells, which means that is enough to finish off the Tiger and the VK as well. So, terrible team play there by the enemy team, and obviously, I've made use of them quite well. And now, I have one shell. And I chose not to reload it right here because the VK could possibly peek me. But now I know the VK is not going to peek. I'm in cover here. And the, the, by the time the VK comes around the corner here, I'm already at the front. I also know that roughly because of the distance and the speed of the vehicles. Um, obviously, I don't exactly know, but I roughly know. And roughly knowing everything that's going on is enough to get you whatever win rate you desire, I guess. I personally don't really care anymore, but if you want to get high win rate, that that's the kind of things that are going on, right? Uh, I'm just, you know, what you can do. Not necessarily what you have to do, but what you can do. Because everybody plays a little bit different. Maybe your playstyle doesn't apply to this whatsoever. Um, but obviously, that is how I do it, right? Just watch what is going on around you and then find the best opportunity to unload your clip without getting into a problem of, oh, there's three guys in front of you. 
and you are currently reloading for 20 seconds. And now, I'm gonna go all the way around. I have the time, I have the map, I have the space. Space and time are always your friend, and if you can use them, you definitely should use them. Just don't rush in too quickly, or don't take a shortcut. Actually, play out the map because you have an advantage. There, and I screw it up again, but quickly peeking is another very important skill that you have to have. And I use it again to finish off the VK168. So with that said, maybe that was useful in terms of playing auto-loading heavy tanks. Maybe it wasn't. Put it down in the comments and see you on the next one. Goodbye.